Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to a new video here on my channel. X299 has been out for quite a while, so I think almost one and a half years. And we already have the refresh CPUs, so already in this system I mounted an 18 core refresh CPU, so it's the 9980XE. Exactly the same as the 7980XE, it's just soldered, so the temperatures are a little bit better under load. We don't have to delete it anymore, so that's why we're using the refresh CPU for this test. And what I actually want to test in this video is how do those refresh boards perform. So when X299 was launched, I made a video where I was talking about X299 and the VRM temperatures because VRM temperatures under load did really not look good. But now, especially at CES, I saw some refresh boards. If you missed my footage, just check out my CES summary video. And the first board or the first refresh board I'm able to test is the X299 Aorus Master. I recently tested the Z390 Aorus Master, which was surprisingly good. It has finned heat sinks and those heat sinks have just a massive amount of surface area. I think they, quite, they require a bit more airflow for good temperatures, but if you have a bit of airflow in your case, the temperatures should be quite a lot better. Especially the C390 Aorus Master also had a backplate, a functional backplate, so not only for static purpose, but also for the purpose of thermals. So the backplate had a thermal pad that would have direct contact to the PCB behind the VRMs, so it would dissipate additional heat. And the X299 Aorus Master should be very, very similar when it comes to the way it's built. So that's why we will take a look at the X299 Aorus Master today. We will do some basic overclocking and see how the thermals look like in a real world performance. So I have the Fantex Evolve X where I built a system in here. So as I said before, it's the 18 core refresh CPU 9980XE, which is mounted in here. Then I have a 360 AIO from Ansat XT, which is mounted on the CPU with therm thermal grizzly cryonaut paste. We have four sticks G-Skill Trident Z RGB memory, which is running at 3200 megahertz. So it's not the highest performance, but it doesn't really matter for today's test. I also chose an Asus RTX 2080 GPU, which is dissipating the heat directly inside the case, because you know there are also those turbo cards or blower cards, which directly exhaust the hot air outside the case on the back, which is typically better for the temperature inside the case, but those cards are typically also quite a lot louder and also achieve worse temperatures than the cards which can dissipate the heat directly inside the case because they have typically a better cooler and have better fans. And that's why I guess most people would choose this card over a blower card. I would also personally choose that in my personal rig. I also have the 2080 Ti, which is dissipating the heat directly inside the case, which then negatively impacts the VRM temperature for sure. So for the base test, I mounted the NZXT 360 AIO in the front to intake air from the front, which will also negatively impact VRM temperature for sure, because obviously CPU under load will get quite hot and uh, the 360 AIO will heat up all the air inside the case. I have three case fans mounted inside the Evolve X and they're currently not running. So for the base test, we are basically simulating the case without any additional fans. This should be pretty much the worst case scenario because it should be even worse than having the board just laying on the table without any airflow because the air inside the case under load is quite a lot hotter. I had an air temperature of about 50 degrees Celsius inside running load. So that should be quite a lot worse than just running it on the open table without any airflow. For the basic testing, obviously I overclocked the CPU. So we will just go into BIOS and I will show you my settings if you want to repeat this at home. If you're thinking of getting the X299 Aorus Master after this video, after we saw this result. So you can just repeat the overclocking. So the advanced frequency settings, I set the CPU to 42, which um, equals CPU clock of 4200 megahertz. Set XMP to profile one, so the memory is already set to 3200 megahertz. Advanced CPU core settings, I adjusted AVX offset to zero and also the 512 offset to zero. Typically, I would advise to set this to three and the AVX offset 512 to five. For today's test, because I want to run AVX load in Prime95, I adjusted it to zero, but for daily usage, you should use three for normal AVX and five for AVX 512. Also disabled Intel Turbo Boost technology because this will disable all the power limits of the board so it doesn't throttle. Advanced voltage settings, advanced power settings, adjusted V-core load line calibration to turbo. So that's just the load line calibration of the, of the VRM itself. But the VRM will send about 1.8 volt to the CPU and the CPU will internally adjust the voltage to the V-core. V-core is set to 1.2 volt and the, the V-in is 1.85. 
So those are the settings for my testing. I already performed some tests in this cooling configuration. So stock was 3.8 GHz boost, 1.1 V-Core. I had 210 watt power draw. Maximum BRM temperature was 74 degrees Celsius max at 15 minutes prime 95 AVX load. 4 GHz 1.15 volt equals 255 watt power draw, which then results in 91 degrees Celsius max uh, VRM temperature. 4.2 GHz, so that's the setting which we just adjusted in the BIOS, 1.2 volt equals 290 watt power draw in Prime95 equals 99 degrees Celsius max VRM temperature. So obviously those numbers now sound quite a bit high, but as I said before, that's just the baseline in pretty much the worst case scenario. So I will now switch the fans so they will blow out the hot air outside of the case and then we will compare the numbers again. All right, I'm back after one full day of testing. So I tested all possible configurations when it comes to fan placement and also AIO placement or fan placement for the AIO. So we will quickly go over the data now. So as I said before, um, the basic settings for the test was 4.2 gigahertz, 1.2 volt and AVX prime. So we're pulling about 285 to 290 watt from the CPU. And the first test was just the AIO pulling air inside the case and no case fans assisting the airflow. In that case, we had a very high VRM temperature of 99 degrees Celsius, which is very obvious because there was no airflow directly over the VRMs and it was only the hot air coming from the AIO. So 99 degrees Celsius on the VRM and 78 degrees Celsius on the CPU, which was a very good CPU temperature. In the next configuration, I left the AIO the same, so still pulling in air from the outside and added two case fans, which were also pulling in air into the system. And in that case, we lowered the VRM temperature to 74 degrees Celsius, but increased CPU temperature to 81 degrees Celsius, which makes perfect sense because we are working pressure inside the system and therefore working against the fans of the AIO. So it makes sense that we're not making the life easier for the AIO, so that CPU temperature was a little bit higher. For the next configuration, I would let the top fan pull the air outside of the case. In that case, we increased the VRM temperature to 81 degrees Celsius while leaving the CPU temperature the same at 81 degrees Celsius. So that was not a positive configuration or a positive change from our previous step. Then again, AIO pulling in air while all other fans would push out the air outside of the case. And in this case, again, we increased the VRM temperature to 89 degrees Celsius. So that was quite a lot worse, but we lowered the CPU um, temperature to 75 degrees Celsius, which makes perfect sense because now we're assisting the AIO, which is pulling in cold air from outside. We help the AIO with the additional case fans, which are pulling out the hot air from the case. So it makes sense as the CPU would be the coldest in this situation, but for the VRM, it didn't really look good. Then I swapped the fans on the AIO so they would pull the air outside of the case. So basically we're using the kind of hot air inside the case to cool the AIO. Without any case fans, we had a VRM temperature of 93 degrees Celsius and a CPU temperature of 83 degrees Celsius. So that's also a quite bad option. But if we then add one case fan in the rear, so this one just pulling cold air inside the case and a little bit over the VRM, it changed the temperature quite drastically. So VRM temperature dropped to 74 degrees Celsius and CPU temperature dropped to 79 degrees Celsius. For the last test, I used the top fan to also pull in cold air from the top. So we have basically all the case fans pulling in cold air from the top and the AIO pulling out the hot air outside of the case. In this configuration, VRM temperature was 71 degrees Celsius and CPU was 78 degrees Celsius. So personally, I think this is pretty much the optimal configuration. We don't have the lowest CPU temperature possible, but the VRM temperature is really good and really, really cold. So now that we know that kind of the optimal configuration would be that all the case fans are pushing air inside the case while the AIO is pulling the hot air outside of the case, how good is the X299 Auros Master? So I performed the exact same testing again with the Prime X299 Deluxe from Asus. So that's a non-refresh board. That's one of the boards I tested originally for the X299 VRM disaster. Obviously there are also refresh boards from Asus now, but I don't have any of those boards yet for testing, which we will probably also do. But for this com uh, comparison, that's the only board I have. And testing against the Prime, it was really interesting because if we just go back to this AIO out, we are in top in, we had 71 degrees Celsius in the VRM on the X299 Aura Smart. Master, CPU temperature was 78 degrees Celsius. Using the exact same configuration on the Prime board, again 4.2 GHz, 1.2 volt, 
running exactly the same test with Prime95 pulling the same load from the CPU. The VRM temperature hit 97 degrees Celsius, so that's quite a lot. While CPU temperature was 81 degrees Celsius, which is fine, I mean it's only a little bit more, it can be that the CPU would be slightly hotter due to the VRM spreading more heat across the VRM, so that could be one potential thing. But it shows how good a FINT heatsink can be if you have the right airflow inside your case. Obviously, if you don't have any airflow inside your case, a FINT heatsink is not going to be better because there will be no airflow through the fins if you don't have any fans assisting. So if you have a board like this, like the X299 Aorus Master, make sure that you have case fans directly above the VRM heatsink or in the back to assist airflow across the heatsink. Before this test, I would always mount the AIO in the direction that it would always pull in cold air from outside, that you have the lowest CPU temperature possible, which is probably not the optimal solution because I think it's, it's fine to have two or three degrees higher CPU temperature if the benefit is 20 degree colder VRM temperature. I think that's a fair trade. So I will probably use exactly this configuration in future for my builds. I hope you also learned something from this video today. Let me know what kind of fan configuration you're using in your system, what kind of experiences you had, what you think of the X299 Aros Master. See you soon.